So at this point, as I game it out with the Democrats, it's been a while since I've looked at the looked at the condition of the race. It is still Joe Biden's to lose at this point. Um, he got beat up a lot in the first debate, and he's got to have a strong performance in the second debate. And he's kind of being true to form. Is why I thought, you know, he isn't running a very good campaign. He's got to run a much stronger campaign, but. It's kind of why I thought he wasn't going to win the nomination to begin with, because he's kind of being true to form, making too many gaffes, running a campaign that's inartful. Um, you know, in the first debate, he looked really tired and confused. Didn't help him. Now, he's still in the strongest position politically because of where he's positioned himself. The, the underlying premise that he will be a sane, reasonable alternative to Donald Trump. That is the strongest card that the Democrats have. Even if you're a Trump supporter, even a fervent Trump supporters are sometimes troubled by Trump's antics. And sometimes Trump's Trumpian persona is counterproductive to his political interests. So the best case scenario, the best possible card that the Democrats can play is to position their eventual nominee as a sane, reasonable alternative to Donald Trump. And so far, Biden still looks like that candidate. So what's the problem? Um, the problem is he's, he's, he's starting to you know, show himself as weak with a glass jaw. I mean, Kamala Harris took him to town in the first debate pretty easily without much of a struggle. Uh, you can tell that she's an excellent prosecutor and she had a choreographed hit piece that went really well for her in the first debate. Now, here's why I do not think Kamala Harris is actually going to be the nominee, despite the fact that it looks like she's rising now and potentially could be. If you've been paying close attention to the race, as I have, you will have noticed something about Kamala Harris. She's terrible. She's terrible. She's an absolutely awful politician. You know, people would get on Hillary Clinton's case about being a terrible politician, but she wasn't really all that bad. She wasn't great. She wasn't inspiring. She wasn't like Obama or Ronald Reagan who could inspire, you know, fervent support. She was pretty flat footed in public and she wasn't. But she was baseline competent. OK, she was very similar to John Kerry or Mitt Romney in that she was baseline competent. Kamala Harris is not. If you've been paying close attention to her, she's been absolutely terrible. Even after that hit piece against Joe Biden, where it's her moment in the sun, she even blew that. The next day, it turns out that the thing that she was calling him essentially racist for supporting, they, they go, well, what's your position on busing? And it's identical to Joe Biden's. Identical. So the whole thing was completely demented. Um, she does a lot of stuff like that. There was, I don't even know if most of you saw, caught this. If you caught it, you were like embarrassed for her. But she was on some, some radio chat show talking about how she used to smoke weed and listen to gangster rap, honestly, which is embarrassing enough in and of itself. But the two albums that she cited as, you know, how she was so cool at college, smoking weed, listening to these two rap albums, hadn't come out yet. <laughs> I swear to God. I swear to God, that's a real thing. Go look it up. She cites, I think, Snoop Dogg and uh, I forget who, I forget who, who exactly she, she cited, but she was like, she went to college in like 89 and she was, she says she's like smoking weed, listening to these two gangster rappers who hadn't come out with albums when she was in college. They didn't come out with the albums till the 90s. Honestly, that happened. That's how bad she can be. I mean, that's dismal. Hillary Clinton never did anything close to that bad. And, and Kamala Harris does stuff like that every single week. If you're paying close attention, you notice it. When with the first debate, Bernie, uh, or the first town hall, Bernie Sanders has some position, adopts some crazy position on giving felons the rights to vote. They ask her, and she, her first response is immediately, I think we need to have a conversation about that. And then the next day, she has to walk that back. She does that a lot. She's really, really good at a choreographed hit piece, at being a prosecutor, at something that's put in front of her and she knows exactly what to say. Then she can be fiery and passionate within the confines of, of, of you know, set lines. But she's terrible when she has to improvise. She's terrible. Worse than Hillary Clinton. A lot worse. So I don't think she's eventually going to be the nominee. And it looks to me like Joe Biden is going to struggle to be the nominee. Now, Pete Buttigieg, he is disappearing too. As far as I can tell, he misinterpreted his moment. 
When he first showed up on the scene, I thought he had a lot of potential. And here was the potential that he showed. And I can't be the only person who noticed this because he rose immediately. Um, first of all, he's gay. That helps a lot in today's world, especially in the woke Democratic primary. But he was a gay man who was presenting himself as friendly to mid-American mid values, Midwestern American values, and Christian. Now, that's a really strong playing card if you play that correctly. That's presenting himself as, I'm going to be a unifying force, and I have respect for, you know, family-oriented Christians and traditional values, but I'm gay. That's, that's gold, as far as I'm concerned. But he played it completely wrong. Um, he's young. He, he'll, he'll be around. He'll be, he'll, he will run again. Um, he played it completely wrong. To, as far as I'm concerned, that, that got people interested because that's a very compelling idea to be a unifier and a healer, to, to have one foot in the SJW camp and one foot in the camp of, you know, traditional Americana, red state, and speak to red state people. But he kind of fumbled that immediately and he started attacking Mike Pence. He did. This is, this, as far as I'm concerned, he, he blew it because he started going after Mike Pence. And as I saw his moment, his potential as, as somebody who was going to unify the culture wars, because I really think there's a lot of people who want that, you know, who don't like all of this. Let's be as antagonistic as humanly possible. And let's dig into our camps and choose sides and be really, really I think there's a lot, it's still America after all, and we like to get along and interact. And, you know, we, I, I still think there's people in the country looking for a healing voice. Now, he blew it immediately because he started becoming a culture warrior right out of the starting gate. He picked a fight with Mike Pence about gay marriage that Mike Pence hadn't said anything about. <laughs> Mike Pence didn't say anything. He picked a fight. So his initial selling point is I'm going to be a healer in these culture wars, and he starts off as a culture warrior. Totally misrepresent, totally misunderstood what his appeal was. And as far as I'm concerned, I think he might have completely annihilated himself because he doesn't seem to be an issue anymore. Which leaves us with Elizabeth Warren. If Joe Biden stumbles badly enough, I think Elizabeth Warren will be the nominee. Um, she's a, she's the same, very similar policies to Bernie Sanders. She is very, 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 anyone who's a really committed leftist, Sanders is their first choice, she's their second choice, or vice versa. They'll be completely comfortable with her. And I think the establishment will ultimately come around to her because if she's smart, um, and I have no reason right now to necessarily think that she will be smart, but it looks like she's starting to understand what she needs to do. Um, Joe Biden has, still has the strongest possible path to victory. But Joe Biden is being Joe Biden, and that means he's being clumsy and he's starting to mess up. And if he's clumsy and he starts to mess up, he will, be, he will take himself out of the running. And the, the person I see as the best position to, to be the nominee, if that happens, is Elizabeth Warren. She's got to overcome a lot of stuff. She needs to tone it down. This is one thing that, that committed ideologues of the right or left do not understand, which really good politicians understand intuitively. Um, you've got your base, period, full stop. There's very, very few politicians that can make a lot of hay by, by constantly appealing to their base. The reason they do it is because, you know, she's committed leftist. It's not, <laughs> that's why she's popular with the left, because she's actually ideologically on the same page. But you've got to tone it down. And I don't foresee that she quite understands that she's got to put a lid on it and like try to moderate her positions and moderate her voice. You don't necessarily have to moderate your positions. That's the part that people don't get. Really good, excellent politicians understand that intuitively. Um, Obama moderated his voice, not necessarily his positions. Ronald Reagan moderated his voice. He didn't moderate his positions at all. He was 100% committed you know, to conservative causes, through and through. But he moderated his voice, which is the, the really the important part, because then you can make an appeal across the aisle, and you can make appeal to people who aren't committed one way or the other. See, Elizabeth Warren, in order for you to like her, you've got to be kind of on board, ideologically. So, we'll see. It's going to be a struggle. 
it's going to be a struggle to the finish line any way you slice it. If Joe Biden stumbles badly enough, that is who I foresee becoming the nominee is Elizabeth Warren. Um, you know, I would say some of the other people, but they just don't seem to be a factor yet. Amy Klobuchar or any of these other, any other people that appeared on the stage, you pretty much don't even remember them. You know, you, I can't even name all of them. So, I mean, so far I still see it as Joe Biden's to lose, but it looks like he might lose it. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. It looks like he's going to lose it. And, you know, originally I thought Beto O'Rourke, I thought he was 100 times more charming than, he's actually, than he actually was. When he, when he did that thing where he started speaking in Spanish um, in the first debate, I mean, that was embarrassing. That was like next level embarrassing. That was pandering times a thousand. That, that, as far as I was concerned, that was it. You know, that was, that was too embarrassing to, to take seriously. So there you go. That's how I, that's how I analyze it thus far. That's all, kids. Amen.